I'm not too sure what to do with my arms right now because this is where I usually start throwing things. Oh, that's terrifying. Gordon Ramsay can be a very scary taskmaster to young chefs and restaurant owners who cross his path. But there are some ghosts from his past that won't leave him alone. Here are 10 huge scandals that will always haunt Gordon Ramsay. Unreality television? This is embarrassing because this should have been a family close-knit type run restaurant. The manager of Dylan's, Martin Hyde, was fired during an episode of Kitchen Nightmares for infractions such as having rat droppings on the floor and rotten hamburger meat in the fridge, which sounds pretty justifiable. Where's the passion gone? But Hyde did not want to accept this humiliation and launched a lawsuit against the show. He claimed many aspects of the so-called reality show were, in fact, not reality at all. He said the problems discovered and solved by Ramsay are, for the most part, staged by Ramsay and the staff to make a good show, like the rotten meat allegedly planted in his refrigerator, all to make it look like he's improving the restaurant. Ramsay denied these allegations by saying, I would never even dream of setting anything up. I want to sleep at night. Now get out of my dream. It's my dream. Not anymore, it's not. Hyde has seen his reputation go down the drain and has basically been blacklisted from the restaurant business as he was portrayed as a bumbling buffoon of a manager, always on his cell phone and not willing to lend a hand when in need. Hard to see how they could have staged that, but hey, it could be possible. Boys will be boys. Ramsey, did you or did you not bang your willy on his foot? Yes. See? Gordon Ramsay has long cultivated a reputation as a bad boy in the culinary world, but what most people might not know is that he got this bad rep even before he was on your TV screens. It all goes back to a very embarrassing incident that happened in 1993. Gordon and two of his chef mates were arrested by the police in a subway station bathroom after they were found in, quote, various states of undress. The young men were reportedly intoxicated after an evening of revelry at the local pub and were supposedly just horsing around. At least this is how Gordon's publicist described the very unfortunate incident. I told you I needed a pee. Oh, so, so, so don't you wake somebody up by doing that? <laughs> but apparently Gordon wasn't the worst of the bunch and was reported to only have had his head slumped on his lap at the urinal, and it was the other two who were responsible for the disturbance. Well, whether he was the mastermind behind this or a mere participant, he was still there, and he still got caught. That's a bit too big, though. I mean, that's a little bit overexcited. The men were charged with gross indecency, and the whole thing was dismissed as a classic case of a boy's lark. A little something something on the side? Go to it's, Colombia, they'll you. teach you. That's baby. right. It's no, I'm not watching. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay has been happily married to Tana Gordon for many years. But what would be a good love story without some drama involved? Back in 2008, Ramsay was allegedly reported to have had an affair with self-proclaimed professional mistress Sarah Simmons for over seven years. Sarah did interviews, talked to newspapers, did everything to get her story out there, claiming she was in possession of compromising voicemails and even a sex tape of her and the famous chef. I never screamed like that in real life, you know, I was all really? acting. Uh, only yes. in the bedroom. Ramsey denied everything on multiple occasions, saying he would never cheat on his wife because if he did, she would, well, you know, make sure he could never do it again if you catch the drift. The case remains a bit on ice as no definite proof has ever been presented, so it's really a he said, she said type of deal. You don't eat pizza with a knife and a fork. You just pick it up and stick it in. Of course, you have to take it like Only when and if some evidence actually emerges would we know the extent of the scandal and its potential to truly haunt the celebrity chef. Insulting Aussies. You picked the wrong guy to tangle with here, mate. <laughs> I don't think so. In 2009, Australian television news presenter Tracy Grimshaw had no doubt about the famous chef's petulant personality after Ramsay posted a picture of a naked woman with a pig head saying, That's Tracy Grimshaw. I had an interview with her yesterday. Holy crap. She needs to see Simon Cowell's Botox doctor. Oh, and he also claimed she was a lesbian and did intend that to be an insult. 
and I'm not going to sit meekly and let some arrogant narcissist bully me. After this insulting and degrading tweet, Tracy Grimshaw did not shy away from the humiliation and voiced her discontent with Ramsey's actions during her reporting. This celebrity dust-up even caught the attention of Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, who supported Tracy in her calling out of the chef. Ramsey's spokesperson eventually issued an apology, saying Ramsey was only trying to make a joke and realized his comments were inappropriate and offensive. And the story ends there. I mean that. Don't look at me like that. No, I know. I, is that I a watch you got? Like, what is that? The scandal just eventually faded away, and the press simply moved on. But the world still remembers that time Gordon was quite cruel and acted as a world-class meanie. A very unlucky cat. You ready? Yeah, let's the do reveal. It. Please. Let's, let's, let's close up on the, uh, on the reveal. In 2019, Gordon opened an Asian restaurant in London called Lucky Cat, and it was described as an authentic eating house inspired by Tokyo in the 1930s. Sounds pretty cool, right? But apparently it may not be as authentic as you might think. According to Ramsey, the invited guests for the opening seemed pleased with the food, but he did acknowledge there was at least one dissenting voice. Angela Hui, a food critic, tried to accuse Ramsey of cultural appropriation after her supposed bad experience at Lucky Cat. She even called it Ramsey's real kitchen nightmare. No! Hui said she felt the food wasn't to be taken seriously since it wasn't focusing on any particular country. It wasn't fully Japanese or fully Chinese, and she thought it was just a disrespectful, messy mix of cuisines. She posted a very bitter review on her social media platforms, and she even went as far as to insult the head chef's wife and calling her a token Asian wife. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? He replied, Replied to these allegations by saying Huey was biased against him and his restaurant because a critic should be professional and have some integrity and not be on a media platform just to be derogatory and offensive. Chef, heal thyself. Almost a little bit like hospital food. Yes. If you've watched Gordon Ramsay's shows such as Kitchen Nightmares and Hell's Kitchen, then you know just how often the chef has had issues with cooks in the past. Well, let me be frank, she's a rubbish baker. Especially those who try to cut corners by using frozen or cooked food instead of making dishes using fresh ingredients. It turns out a couple of Ramsey's gastro pubs in the UK have been accused of taking these exact same shortcuts. One specific allegation made by the Sun tabloid said that a Ramsey owned company called GR Logistics was providing bagged and pre prepared foods to his restaurants. Critics framed the scandal as a matter of trust, but Ramsey's spokesperson tried to defend defend the practice by saying that, while they did prepare some elements of the meals beforehand, they were still produced to the highest Ramsey standards. I'm talking about the Gordon's fish sticks, have you tried those? The food is sealed and transported in refrigerated vans and all cooked in the individual kitchens, and this is solely done to ensure the consistency and quality of the food being served. However, some people didn't buy it. They compare it to a classic case of, do as I say, not as I do. To be or not to be Scottish. Eat your haggis right here. Shot heart and lungs boiled in a wee sheep stomach. Gordon Ramsay was born in Johnstone, Scotland, but spent the majority of his life in England as he and his parents moved to Stratford-upon-Avon when he was only five years old. He mostly sees himself as English since, well, he was raised there, but Scotland refuses to lose him as a national treasure. According to some very angry and territorial Scottish folk, Gordon apparently has shunned his Scottish heritage and now tries to pass as English. It makes me feel homesick. Well, an episode of Kitchen Nightmares from 2011 was enough to send the Scottish people into a frenzy. Gordon is seen comparing himself with an England-born chef, saying that they share a lot in common, primarily because they are both English. What? It's easy to see why that statement struck a chord. It even drew the wrath of a Scottish politician who demanded Ramsay apologize to the good people of Scotland because he should always remember where he came from, even if some of his American TV audience doesn't know the difference between Scottish, English, and Chinese. Bad neighbor. How's it going? 
Are you our new neighbors? We're your new neighbors! Yeah. Yeah. A home is a man's castle, and Gordon Ramsay built himself a sprawling estate in Cornwall, England, fit for a king. Or a really wealthy reality television star, at least. But is this king's castle more like a postmodern mansion shaped like boxes? Apparently, his unhappy neighbors thought Ramsay's house looked like a stack of containers and said he made no effort whatsoever to meet with neighbors about their concerns. One of them even said it showed a lack of consideration for local residents. Wow, sounds like a great deal. So, I'm getting exactly what I want then. Appears so. And that wasn't the only issue with his mansion. Building his new home meant demolishing the original house that was built in the 1920s. A very vintage and charming house that added elegance to the neighborhood. They also had to cut down century-old trees to make room for his driveway. I'd like you to chop this tree down with a single swing. So not only did the locals lose some neighborhood appeal, but they were also treated to boxy containers in its place. It drastically impacted the development and the value of the neighborhood because, well, you can't see the nice houses from the road anymore. All you see is his big boxed mansion. But hey, wouldn't that drive more people to invest in the area, though? Being Gordon Ramsay's neighbor must have its perks. Another F-bomb scandal. Plonka. Anyone who has watched Gordon Ramsay on television for more than two minutes knows that he has a habit of using foul language. Some say it's part of what gives him his charm. When his shows air in the United States, broadcasting rules mandate that the swear words are bleeped out. But in Australia, his expletive-rich speech is aired in all its inglorious splendor. According to some Australian legislators who actually bothered to count, in 2008, Gordon dropped a whopping 80 F-bombs in a single episode of Kitchen Nightmares. You're pulling my plonker now, aren't you? This seems like an awful lot, even for the chef's colorful vocabulary. Many Australians complained about the overuse of profanity, so much so that an Australian senator even launched an inquiry into the broadcasting standards, asking for tighter regulations. Interesting how over there they wanted less swear words, and over here in the U.S., most people complain when they bleep it out. Gordon responded to these controversies by saying if people didn't want to hear him swear, they just had to change the channel. He says he doesn't do it on purpose, it's just the Muppets he has to work with sometimes. So we just want to make sure you know exactly what you can and cannot say on television. He went on to say, it's high pressure, high energy, and most importantly, real. That's how we keep it every day. In the end, the scandal was probably good for ratings because of the added publicity it generated. Charted territory. That's disgusting. Thank God I've got some wine to wash it down. God dear, oh dear. Television programming has always been derivative. There's always been a need for a lot of content, and that need has only grown, especially in recent years with the proliferation of streaming services. Another one. Ramsey has been accused of ripping off the late Anthony Bourdain's very popular shows. The announcement of Ramsey's National Geographic Channel series was only a few months after Bourdain's tragic passing, which right from the start made fans of the show upset. But what made them even more upset was the blatant resemblance between Anthony Bourdain's former show and Gordon Ramsay's new one. Uncharted has a near-identical premise as Parts Unknown, a show in which Bourdain would travel around the world to taste the local cuisine in exotic locations. A lot of people immediately took offense and started slamming Ramsay on social media, calling him a ripoff. Even celebrity chef Eddie Huang took part in this roast and tweeted, The last thing the world needs right now is Gordon Ramsay going to foreign countries showing locals how he can cook their cuisines better than they can. Gordon only had one thing to say, just give the show a try. People were judging it before it even aired, so how could they have enough information to pass a judgment? He said there was an entire team behind this show's production that worked really hard, and they didn't deserve all the negative feedback they were receiving. What in the hell was that? Get a taste of more great videos. Just tap or click. And hey, leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.